Okay, bear with me on this one because I am like a kid on Christmas morning. put a photo of this up on Instagram but I didn't let out what it was yet so this is the big reveal and I think this could be a real game changer okay so it's not in the original box because I'm pretty sure this isn't Wi-Fi compatible so as always I went hunting on eBay Never like to uh, spend more than needed. So this is the next demo version. But hopefully that's still going to be okay for us. Ah, it has got a box. Right, we're getting there. So, hopefully you guessed by now. We might not have if you're a, not a woodworker, but this is a thicknesser, or in the States, I think you refer to these as planers. And this is a long-awaited purchase. Something I've put off because I've seen it as a luxury, but now it's gonna be, well, it's gonna save us money, I hope, or at least pay for itself. So there are a few marks on the outfeed table, so maybe it has been used a little bit. All being well, the planer um, blades are gonna be in good condition. So the reason I finally bit the bullet and I bought this is because I really wanted to use up the timber that I've been gathering over the years and also that big hunk of poplar, uh, which is all rough sawn for when we come to do the van project. And with the help of this, I'm hoping that we can build all of our own uh, cabinetry, the framing, the carcassing. So the original plan was to buy a planar thicknesser, which uh, is quite common here in UK and Europe, whereas um, it looks to me that elsewhere, especially in the States, you keep them as separate machines, whereas here you can get a planar thicknesser and you basically use the top as your planer or jointer and then underneath is your thicknesser. Um, the only problem with those is they are, for, for this dimension of thickness, are, they're much more expensive. So I figured most, most of my timber is already dimensionally close. So I think I can probably get by without uh, the, you know, the planar bed. Also, this will get to six inches, which, although it's probably asking a little bit too much of it, means we might be able to plane some of our oak before we do any of the construction work next year. Alright, let's see if we can take the top off and have a peek at the blades. Alright, so this is the, the spinny thing. Ah, so there's a little lock on the side there. So when you want to take off the blades, you can spin it around and it stays put. So these knives are actually, they, they've clearly been used but they look pretty pretty good. There's no chips out of them, which is important. And they certainly feel ch uh, sharper than my hand planes. Which is not hard, but anyway. Good, so I, I just wanted to check that, not being a new machine, I just wanted to make sure there's no loose blades or anything crazy that's gonna come flying out. Uh, when we start it up. Right, 
Right, so there is some sort of hood that goes over the slot which ejects the chippings. Um, then we can attach the shock back to that. From what I've heard, this is pretty good. It just it, it doesn't create really fine dust like a sander or even a table saw. So what I might do is is put this on in the future and then duct this um, just to a, a container, a loose container, uh, and let it just pile up that way rather than send it flying over the floor. For now, we'll send it flying over the floor. Right, so been out to the burn pile, to all our kind of scrap wood, and uh, I tell you what, there are some really nice hardwood, and it, which has come from the pallet from when we ordered the limestone. Unfortunately, I don't trust that to be grit free. Um, it might be worth planing it through in the future with a designated set of knives that we could use for that sort of old uh, outdoor type wood. But the last thing I want to do is ruin these blades with some grit. So I've brought in a little bit of poplar uh, to test and I've also got another little section over here. This is fairly rough sawn but it's pretty much even as far as the thickness goes. Actually there's a wider piece here, we'll use this. There's a little bit of a cut to this board as well so it'll just take off the top to start with but we can make up some jigs and stuff to flatten out boards using this without a jointer or a planer. We'll see how we get on. This isn't a review, maybe we'll do a review once I've taught myself what I'm doing here, but hopefully we can get an idea of how well it performs and how noisy it is. Okay, so two lessons we've learned. We are going to use the dust chip, wood chip hood, because it's just throwing chips everywhere. And secondly, it's pretty quick. I think we should be using a longer board to test it. But it's just floating through that. So I've stuck the little shroud on the back now, which, I mean, it looked like it was sending them out. You know, it really flings them out. So this looks like it directs them through and out this little spigot on the end here. Of course we could hook up the shop vac, but to be honest it would fill up in no time at all, uh, bearing in mind it's quite a small one. So for the time being I'm just going to let it shoot out the side. It might even land in the box. So that's now given us a plain surface all the way across. Now of course this isn't going to be perfect because it was a cut board to start with. So now we should be able to put this side bed down and then flatten the other side and get an even thickness all the way through. I'm now expecting it to take out material from the edges first and then once we've planed the middle it should be even, even thickness. Well, I am really, really impressed with that. Now clearly, I'm not coming to this from a point of view of having used lots of these machines. I've never used one before, I've only used handheld planers. But that is uh, a seriously smooth piece of wood. We'll, we'll get the calipers on it just to see how accurate uh, it is. And we can also reference that against the gauge on here to see if that's a true representation. If I can find some calipers. Oh, I can't see them anywhere, so I'll just use a square. So I'm getting 20, 24 mil. All the way around there. It's 
24 centre and edges. And then from here, it's reading at 23 and a half, maybe 20, just under 24. So what I can do is just adjust those little screws and move that up. But I'll do that once I've got a little bit more accuracy in measuring it. So that's our plain poplar. I guess this is only about 200 mil wide, maybe a little bit more. But we've got the potential to, to plane half as wide again. There's things like the snipe issue, which we need to uh, look at on a longer board, but nothing's jumping out at me here. It's certainly measuring the same all the way along the front there. I could potentially feel a little dip an inch or two in. And I'm glad we tested it on this bit of poplar because this is really what the whole of this project is gonna be about. It, it's gonna be about planing down all of the boards we've got. I'll give you a quick look at them now just so you can kind of get an idea of the scale of what we've got to come. This is the timber that I was talking about. This is all rough sawn poplar, variety of thicknesses, but basically everything from about 25 mil or one inch up to kind of 35 mil. So we've got all this potential stacked here and I've been able to do nothing with it. I've done a few little hand projects with it by planing it or power planing it, but these boards, some of them are over two feet wide and they're just crying out to have projects uh, thrown at them. It's certainly enough to do the majority of what we want to do in the van conversion. I've got window sills to build in the house. I've got trim to do and joinery for the staircase project. It's all poplar. Poplar's a hardwood, but a soft hardwood. Pretty much all of this is not free, uh, which makes it just absolutely perfect for painting but I personally quite like it uh, stained uh, or, or using the Osmo products on them. Uh, it's a really kind of subtle grain and really straight. Uh, so, you know, we've got lo just loads of options. I've even got it stashed up in the roof here. So as another byproduct, as soon as we can start getting rid of this, it means we've got more workspace, which means more tools. No, it doesn't, no, it doesn't. Just in case Jay's watching. It doesn't mean more tools. It just means more space for more projects and more videos and that chip extraction worked pretty well there's no dust in the air at all because we're taking off these shavings they come off they come off like quite nice size shavings so then none of it went airborne um, and this shot out fairly accurately and I managed to catch it in a cardboard box to an extent what I have seen done is that just ducted with a little bit of pipe work into a vessel of some sort or even into a pillowcase. I think Jay Bates on his channel said you can duct it across in a pillowcase because obviously that let the air out as well. And of course, providing it's clean virgin wood that goes through here and it's not been painted or treated, then all of that we can collect up and stick down with the chickens and ducks. So I don't think I'm going over the top by saying that this tool is going to be an absolute game changer. What it means we can do is create exactly what we want. We're not restricted by dimensions in the store. I don't want to push it beyond its capability, but I'm really eager to see how it performs on oak. Uh, and if we can stick a six inch wide, but by six inch tall, you know, 150 mil square post through this, that's going to be a serious uh, winning plus point for this tool because it means that I can put through uh, the oak posts before we start building the gazebo or the back porch or any of the future projects I've got somewhere up here in my head and we can just get a really awesome finish. So we can literally just make anything we want, especially when it comes to the van where we're working with really small tolerances, trying to get everything really bespoke to make the most of the space. We can build our carcasses, cabinets, doors, everything exactly how we want them. We can also start reusing all the old timber that I've been hoarding and hoarding for the last few years and start putting it to good use so we can start getting some more woodworking projects out there. There we go. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.